an actual real life comparison of two of the world's most popular sprint bikes and compare them as detailed as I possibly can. This is how easy it is to take your Great Dane for a walk in the morning. Good morning everybody, what's happening, what's going on? We're already at the track. It is a beautiful day in Phoenix. It's already 70 degrees and it's just about 11 o'clock here on Tuesday. Um, we got a little discus that's going to be coming wherever the cage is behind us. And uh, then some block starts. So we're going to talk about sprint spikes today. And then uh, we got some potentially distant stuff that's not my favorite, but stuff we got to get in. Anyways, uh, here's some... Here's a little, here's some, here's some discus. Good and that it was a short day of discus, so not a ton of throws. Um, my groin's actually been bothering me a little bit lately. Uh, between the throws and the spin, or between the spin and the shot put and the spin in the discus, and then pole vaulting all last week, it's been a little, uh, little sore. Nothing crazy, but um, something we're gonna get through. And then the minimum amount of throws, meaning that they actually went well, so I didn't have to take a ton of throws. Um, working on still that technical side of things, trying to get the technical side down before I start throwing super hard. Um, hopefully, once we combine both hard days of throwing and technical days of throwing, the discus goes further. Because right now, it's not going super far. It's going about where my PB would be, but obviously to be top in the world, top in the US, I need to be uh, much further. For some reason, further is this way. Okay, um, we have hurdle mobility stuff like walkovers, skips, throughs, and all that stuff, and then uh, some block starts. But, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying now, but hey, hurdles, block starts, all that fun stuff. Here we go. back in practice and as you guys know I recently switched back to running in my Nike spikes these are the Jeff flies um, and these are the Adidas Audi Zero Prime Sprint Star uh, both are not the newest model um, I don't even know if Nike makes the Jeff fly anymore and these aren't the newest model of the Adidas but I figured since I've worn them both and worn them both at a high level and competed in both actually um, I figured I could do a comparison, an actual real life comparison of two of the world's most popular sprint bikes and compare them as detailed as I possibly can. Okay, first off, I'm not sponsored by either of these companies. Uh, I wish I was and I would be more than happy to support either of them if I was, but I'm not. So I'm going to trash one and talk good about the other, I'm going to trash the other one and talk good about the other one. First off, we're going to start with what the websites describe their specific shoes as. First off, Nike. Fly out of the blocks with these lightweight spikes designed to withstand the impact of sprint events. Okay. 
Woven upper for breathable flexibility. Asymmetrical tongue construction. Wraps the foot and eliminating irritation. A seamless toe tip for comfortable durability in the blocks. Heel counter sits low on the foot for reduced Achilles pressure. Low profile Phylon midsole wedge cushions on impact and creates a smooth transition from heel strike to toe off. Eight spike Pebex plate has areas of stiffness and flexibility where you need them most. Includes quarter inch pyramid spikes and a wrench. They claim the weight is 6.6 .6 ounces. Um, we're going to do ounces in grams. I have a scale. Don't worry. The Adidas Adi Zero Prime Sprint. Their description is designed to keep elite sprinters light on their feet. These spikes are best for the 60, the 100, 200, 4x1, and 110 meter hurdles. Notice that the 400 wasn't listed in this group of sprints. They have a synthetic upper that holds your foot in place. The Audi Zero Nano Plate transfers the power of your stride through the foot while reducing torque for more efficient energy return. Sprint plate keeps foot in perfect position for increased forward momentum. Six permanent nano ceramic compression pins minimizing braking forces and allowing the foot to be closer to the track. Weight 3.4 ounces, so almost half the weight of the Nike spike here. And like I said, I have a scale, I will weigh both of them. So that's what they describe their shoes as on their websites. And to me, the Adidas is going to be designed and advertised for the much, much more elite or pro level athlete or somebody that's going to run through these shoes quite a bit. They describe this shoe much more technically. So they're worried about weight. They're worried about actual force feedback into the track, getting your foot closer to the track and not necessarily about comfortability. They actually didn't say anything about comfortability. The Nike, on the other hand, they talk quite a bit about comfortability and how you're going to feel while you're wearing it. So seamless toe box, they're saying that that's going to be more comfortable, less rubbing. The asymmetric tongues are going to provide less, uh, less irritation while you're running a curve or something. Um, it has a like padded wedge in the bottom of the shoe, which is completely opposite of what the Adidas is. And they describe their like heel, like not like lace, but heel little hook thing that holds onto your foot uh, to have less pressure on your Achilles. So in my personal experience, I would agree with a lot of that. The Adidas spike is definitely a lighter spike. It is um, much less durable in my mind than the Nike spike. I only wore the Adidas spike for two practices and the toe is already beat up, almost worn through. Um, and it feels like my foot kind of slides around. It doesn't really lock my foot in. And then the Nike one I've worn for probably four or five practices, all doing block starts in those practices. And the toe box on the foot that I drag is pretty much worn through as well. Um, I do find that the Nike spike is much more comfortable. Um, it does put much, much less pressure on my Achilles, even though this one doesn't necessarily have anything except for fabric here. This one has a much stiffer back section. Um, the, the stiffer back section actually doesn't put as much pressure on my Achilles, which is weird, but that's how I feel and that's why I switched back to the Nike spike because the Adidas spike when I was wearing it actually caused me to have Achilles problems. The Adidas spike is designed to be as minimal as possible, as holes drilled in the sides, um, holes drilled in the toes, uh, even holes drilled in the non-removable platform at the bottom. Um, the spikes aren't removable. The spike plate is unbelievably thin and very, very stiff. And there's really no padding. So when you put these on, it's basically like you're running barefoot with a ton of traction. These on the other hand are much more comfortable. They have padding in the bottom of the shoe that again, isn't removable. They have removable spikes. so if one of your spikes wears out and starts to put pressure on the bottom of your foot, you can replace it. There's a little bit of padding actually where your foot goes into the shoe. The tongue is a little bit padded so that the laces don't beat up your feet. And uh, I think this is just generally a more comfortable shoe. Now for a little bit more of the specifics. So we're gonna start out with weight. Um, I'm gonna weigh it in grams first and we're gonna weigh both of the right shoes are right-handed, so I figured the right shoe should be the one we're gonna weigh. 
So we're weighing the Adidas in grams and it weighs 134 grams. The right shoe of the Nike pair weighs 174 grams. Now on their website they claim that this shoe is pretty much twice as heavy as this shoe. So we're gonna switch to ounces here. They claim that this shoe is 3.4 ounces, this shoe is 6 point something ounces, can't really remember. So again with the right shoe, they claim this shoe weighed 3.4 ounces, it weighs 4.73 ounces in real life. This shoe weighs 6.14 ounces in real life. So in this case, Nike's actually advertising a much more accurate weight to what the Audi Zero Prime Sprint is being advertised at and definitely the weight discrepancy between the two of them isn't nearly as severe as the weight discrepancy that is actually online. So in real life comparison, we have to give weight to the Adidas spike. Now, the Nike spike comes with eight uh, pyramid spikes across the bottom and they are removable. You can switch them out to be uh, Christmas trees if you want to run Christmas trees, needles, whatever. But the majority of tracks are gonna make you run in pyramid spikes. And I know that there's a track in Bend that you can only run in pyramid spikes and if you run in anything else, you're not actually going to be able to run in them. So the ability to switch the spikes out on the Nike shoes is kind of an advantage, especially at the younger ages where track surfaces are gonna be different, high school is gonna be very, high schools are gonna be very specific as to the spike that is allowed to be run on that track, specifically because they are worried about durability of the track, not necessarily the durability or how fast the athlete is running. And then with the Audi Zero Sprint Prime or Prime Sprint, uh, they have six what they claim to be ceramic spikes to make them a little bit lighter than the steel spikes they are gonna be in the Nike shoe. They are not a pyramid design, so some tracks uh, will have problems with that. Specifically Mondo tracks, they really don't want uh, spikes that aren't pyramids to be run on them because it tears them up a little bit more than uh, just a normal track surface. But these ones are a little bit, uh, I would say longer than quarter inch, but they would still pass on a spike check, obviously, because otherwise Adidas would, no one would ever be able to run in this shoe. And they are spaced in a way that they claim works best with getting force into the track. So if you notice on both shoes, they are spaced out around the edges. No one puts spikes in the middle of the feet anymore as when I was running in high school. So as far as the specific spikes go, I think that the Adidas is gonna be a lighter specific spike because it's made of that ceramic and not steel. But I'm gonna to have to give the win to the Nike shoe because they're actually interchangeable. So whether you're running on different surfaces, whether you need a longer spike, a shorter spike. I know in Australia, even they have grass tracks, so you'd be running on with even a longer spike than what you would be wanting in either of these shoes on a regular basis or on a regular track. The, the spikes here are interchangeable. So if you're a high school kid, this might be a better option because you're gonna be able to run on more surfaces than if you were just to go with the ceramic spikes that are in here. You're not gonna be able to run on as many surfaces because there's gonna be more regulations and you're not gonna be able to change them. Now the actual material of the shoe. The Adidas shoe, uh, the material almost feels like a fake leather or um, kind of plasticky, realistically. Uh, it's not necessarily a rubber. It kind of feels suede on the inside. Um, it is very, very flimsy, very, very thin. I wouldn't, I don't, I shouldn't say flimsy. Um, it is very thin and very malleable. So it, when you tighten it down, it really does hug up to your foot and it kind of feels like there's nothing there. It's almost like you're wearing a sock with a spike plate on the bottom. The Nike shoe on the other hand is a little bit more rigid. Um, the material around it is some sort of woven I don't know what they actually claimed it was, but it's just, it is more rigid. It feels like you're actually wearing a shoe when you're running in them. And to me, um, the Adidas is probably more 
feels more elite, right? It feels like you're able to put more force on the ground. It is lighter, so it doesn't feel like you're really wearing anything. And the Nike Spike kind of, when you cinch it down, can have some pressure points on top of it. But overall, while you're running, I would say that this one is gonna feel a little bit better around your foot. This one, you're gonna wanna take off right after the race. So as far as spike plates go, the Nike Spike's actually gonna bend a little bit more. Um, it's not gonna be as rigid, but still put your foot in a very, very good position to be sprinting. Like they said, it is a little bit more rounded, so it's not a perfectly flat spike plate up here where the spikes actually contact. It is a little bit rounded and the whole shoe kind of curves into that. Um, and they kind of talk about that, that it kind of rolls your foot forward. The Adidas spike is basically the opposite. It is unbelievably stiff. It doesn't bend at all. The spike plate is perfectly flat and they claim that that puts your foot into a better position uh, to actually apply force into the ground, but essentially just dorsal flexion. Um, this little curve here they claim puts your all of your pressure on these six spikes, which I would agree with. When I'm running in these two pairs, I feel like when I'm running in the Adidas spike, I have no option but to run on my toes 100% of the time. Even when you're walking, you feel like you have to walk on your toes 100% of the time. The spike plate doesn't bend and you're forced to just be up here the whole time. The actual curvature of the spike, like I said, this one kind of rolls. So here you can see, even though I'm up on my toes on the spike plate, I still continue to roll all the way up to the top or like the very, very tiptoe of my foot. When I put pressure on the very tiptoe of my foot on the Adidas spike, my foot just stops. So if we compare the initial, where you would probably run the majority of your races, the Adidas is gonna have a little bit more of an aggressive angle. The Nike, if we go all the way up to the tiptoe, which is gonna be where you're gonna run or basically do all your block starts at, it has a little bit more of an aggressive angle. But throughout the race, the Adidas is gonna put you at a more aggressive angle. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, I don't think that it's kind of, that, that ju that's just personal preference and how your body actually feels while running. So as far as win or lose, uh, I think it's kind of a draw. Um, this one's gonna be more comfortable, this one's gonna make you run faster, theoretically. So in conclusion, the Adidas spike is gonna be advertised to that elite level runner, the professional, the person that wants to only run sprints and short sprints at that and is gonna be able to replace their spike. Not looking for something that's super durable, something that they're gonna get a few races out of, they're gonna get two or three, four, five, six, seven practices out of before it starts to wear down and it's not a shoe that you wanna be wearing anymore. Um, once it wears in, it might be a little bit more comfortable, but as of right now, it's not a super comfortable shoe. The Nike, on the other hand, they're gonna be advertising to the vast majority of athletes. So athletes that wanna get a ton of practices in, athletes that are gonna be wearing these for multiple hours at a track meet, um, waiting in lines, waiting in call rooms, whatnot, that are gonna want a durable shoe that's also comfortable. So something that they can beat the crap out of and still show up on race day and expect to perform well in it. As far as my actual preference, you guys already know that I'm gonna choose the Nike Spike over this Adidas Spike. Now that's not to be said that there's other Adidas Spikes that aren't out there that are similar to the Jufly. I'm gonna choose Nike just because I've run in it before, I know that it doesn't hurt my Achilles. When I ran in these, whether it was the angle that it forced my foot to be in, or whether it was actually the pressure of the little heel lock thing that put pressure on my Achilles that caused pain, Either way, I switched back to running in the Nike Spike, even though these might be able to make me run faster. If I'm injured, I'm not gonna run faster. So I switched back to the Nikes. Um, all in all, they're both phenomenal spikes and I can re recommend both of them. Um, like I said, this one's not gonna last as long as these guys are, and these guys aren't gonna be as light and uh, quick as these guys are. Um, I hope that you guys could learn something from that. I know that there's a ton of high schoolers out there that are asking about spikes or ask me personally about spikes. They DM me. I have my high school kids that I coach come up and ask about spikes. So hopefully this gives you some knowledge as far as Nike to Adidas or at least these comparison between these two spikes. Um, if you'd like to see more spike comparisons in the future, feel free to comment down below which spikes I should compare. 
or which spikes you should wear for an event. Um, I'm more than happy to inform you of which spikes I personally prefer per the event. Obviously, you guys know I do all the events, so I have my preferences. I've jumped in multiple different spikes. I have sprinted in multiple different spikes and I've run distance in multiple different spikes. Um, you guys love shoes, so I figured, hey, might as well start talking about the stuff that I compete in. These are my tools. Um, I expect the most out of my tools so that I can do my job the best I possibly can. This is probably a sharper tool, but this is a multi-tool and I'm gonna go with the multi-tool because I'm a multi-athlete. But that's gonna be the end of today's video, so I hope you guys did enjoy it. Remember to be nice to people, don't hurt yourself, don't hurt others, slow down, don't dance so fast, and I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow. Oh yeah, and if you're new to the channel, which a lot of you guys are, because we're growing quick, don't forget that I make a video every single day. So that means yesterday I made a video and tomorrow I'm gonna to be making a video. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, so you actually get the notification when I post it. It's somewhere, somewhere before nine o'clock. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow. Okay, bye.